Hey guys, today I wanted to show you one of my favorite entertaining recipes. It's a recipe for Parker House Rolls. Parker House Rolls are these light and fluffy and buttery rolls that are perfect for Easter, which is coming up, or just kind of any old Sunday dinner. Let me show you how to do it. Okay, so let's get started. First off, I have a stand mixer. It's really kind of best to use a stand mixer. It's just easier. You could also do it by hand. It's just gonna get a little messy. Um, I've got one stick of butter, which is also eight tablespoons that's been melted. To that, I'm gonna add one and a quarter cups of milk, as well as three tablespoons of sugar. We're gonna add the yeast to this mixture, so you wanna make sure it's not too hot. So I like melting the butter first and then adding in the cool milk, which will kind of bring down the temperature of the melted butter. Because if the butter mixture is too hot, then the yeast will die, and we don't want that, because the yeast is kind of what makes it light and fluffy. So I've got two and a quarter teaspoons of yeast. Just put that right on in. A lot of recipes will tell you just to kind of throw everything together with the flour and knead it. I like to know that the yeast is alive before I kind of finish the rest of it, because if it's not alive, then your bread's not gonna be light and fluffy. So I like to do what they call proofing the yeast um, before I add the rest of my ingredients in. So I'm gonna give it a little stir, and then we're gonna let it hang out at room temperature for like five minutes or until you start to see bubbles forming. Okay, so my yeast mixture is ready. We're gonna add four cups of all-purpose flour and then fit it with the dough hook. We're just gonna knead that together. Okay, my dough has just come together. You can see that it's not fully formed into dough, but it's come together. To that, we're gonna add one egg, and I like cracking my eggs on the countertop before putting it in there, because if you did the side, then eggshells might get in there. So one egg straight on in. We've got about two tablespoons of just assorted herbs. You wanna use the woody herbs like thyme or rosemary. Um, today I'm using a mixture of rosemary and thyme. Just put that straight on in there. And if you don't want thyme in your Parker House rolls, you can just skip that step. And then about two teaspoons of salt. And then we're gonna mix this together. Okay, so my dough has come together. I'm gonna still need to knead it a little more, but today I used four cups of flour. Sometimes I can use up to four and a quarter cups of flour, just depending on the weather, if it's really humid, or if my flour is really dry, it just kind of depends. So if your dough after four cups of flour is still like a little sticky, you can add a couple teaspoons of all-purpose flour in at a time just to kind of make it come together and not be sticky. You want it to be slightly tacky, but not sticky. So I'm gonna let this knead for a couple minutes until it's smooth. Okay, so my dough is ready. I'm gonna pull it out and knead it just a couple times on a clean countertop. So someone once explained to me how you know when your dough is ready, and there's lots of different tests, like if it, if it bounces back, um, but someone, if it's smooth, if it's tacky, but someone actually said, your dough is ready when you can't stop playing with it. Meaning it's smooth and just kind of like Play-Doh-y and really fun to play with. Um, that's when you know that your dough is ready, which I thought was really interesting, and it's true how you get your work at in. So my dough is ready. You can tell that it's done because it's smooth on top and it's still slightly tacky. We're gonna let it rise for an hour and a half in a draft-free spot until it's doubled in size. Okay, so my dough has doubled in size. It's huge and it's ready to be portioned out into the rolls. This might be my favorite part of making this recipe, but the dough is risen and you need to punch it down. So just get out all your aggression. Let's knead it again really quickly and then we're gonna shape it into rolls. I'm gonna cut this in half and then use a scale to actually shape these rolls. And if you don't have a scale, it's totally fine to eyeball it, um, but if you want kind of perfectly precise rolls, which I do, I like using a scale. That way you can weigh out each roll and make sure they're the same size. So if I'm doing this recipe before, kind of many times for dinner, so I'm just gonna grab a piece of it and then estimate that it might be two ounces. So it's a little over and just basically play this game until you get two ounces. Okay, so the Parker House rolls don't look very pretty, um, but next up we're going to shape them into perfect balls. So you could just do this between your two hands, which definitely works. Um, one way that I like to do it is actually on a countertop. So if you just put the piece of the dough on the countertop and then cup your hands, and then you can roll it around like that, and it'll come out into like a perfect ball. Okay, and it comes out into a great, nice looking ball. So I have a nine by 13 pan that I've sprayed with nonstick spray and then we're just gonna nestle each of the rolls in there. My rolls are completely divided up. I've got 20 of them. So the next step is to brush the top of each of one with a little bit of butter. And who doesn't love more butter, right? <laughs> and then on top of the butter, we're just gonna add some flaky sea salt. Then we're gonna cover them with a clean towel 
and let them sit at room temperature for about a half an hour until they double in size. Okay, so let's check on how our Parker House rolls are looking. Um, and they're ready to go into the oven. So I've got a 350 degree oven preheated and they're gonna be in there for about half an hour or until golden brown on top. Okay, so my Parker House rolls are done. Don't they look amazing? They smell even better. I'm gonna like bottle that smell up and sell it. It smells so good. So they are done and right now you could actually just eat them, but I'm gonna put a little more butter on top because butter never hurt anyone, right? Um, just to kind of get the tops a little glossy. These will go perfect with your Easter dinner on Sunday or any special occasion. And then one last thing we're gonna do is just put a little bit of fresh thyme right on top. So just sprinkle it on top just for a little color and freshness. And there you have it. This is how you make Parker House Rolls. If you do end up making this, please let me know. Leave it in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and tune in each week as I post a new recipe video.